LGBTIQ people are everywhere and they have the same rights as everyone else, but due to their identity, they're often denied those rights. And we need to be doing everything we can to make sure that their full human rights are realized. At the UN, it means making sure we're being very deliberate about including LGBTIQ people in official documents, in resolutions, and in, in uh, the way we speak about people and about gender. As part of the UN team, I engage with the UN around the year, around the calendar. So there are a number of big events at the UN throughout the year. And during those events, we're turning up and we're making sure LGBTIQ voices are heard in every room we can be in at the UN. But then around the year, we're also doing work um, outside of those events, working with diplomats, working with UN agencies, and working with activists to make sure we are always bringing a queer lens to the work of the United Nations. The UN LGBTI core group is a group of right now 42 states, and Outright is the secretariat of the core group. They push for better language and resolutions that will include LGBTIQ people, and they bring attention to the specific needs and, and difficulties that LGBTIQ people face. So in rooms where maybe otherwise these concerns wouldn't be heard, they're in there, they're making statements, they're pushing for better language and negotiations. The UN is also a major funder, and in that way, I think it should be seen as, as a way to acquire resources to fund LGBTIQ movement priorities. I also think it can set some important norms as a source of human rights experts, which we've seen have been used at the national level to uh, push for greater um, equality. And I think it's really important to engage with the UN for all of those reasons. At the same time, the UN, I think, isn't the be all and end all. The UN isn't going to by itself change the world. Activists are doing that. But the UN is one tool in this broader movement. And I think it's important to engage with on those terms.